G'day everybody and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to give a very quick tutorial as to why you should stop using Netcat. This is something that would have greatly have benefited me while doing my OSCP as I found that Netcat often was just too limited even when you upgrade the shell into to have more capability. While the OSCP course actually does touch on SOCAT, having very little to do with it, I just ignored it for the entire time. And this is a quick little tip that I just found out the other day, which will probably save you a lot of time. So to get started, we have on our right a victim machine and on our left our attacker machine. While we have a SSH session on the right, this is purely just for example purposes. We would ex we would assume that we have some sort of PHP PHP shell just to do some simple code execution. So typically, we would do a netcat followed by our IP address and port, and we'll also listen to it on the attacker machine. So let's go do that now. And as we can see, we just get a normal reverse shell with netcat, and we can see that this is very limited. Of course, we can do ID to, just to verify we're in the actual machine, and, and we have very basic functionality. So we can change directory, list directory, etc. Things that you're already well familiar with. But when it comes to anything else, so potentially we wanted to do sudo, we'll see that this will just not do anything as we haven't got an interactive shell. We can do a one-liner to upgrade the shell to be able to have some level of interaction. But when it comes to things like but when it comes to things like reading files, we are very limited. So we can see now just by doing that sudo with an un unupgraded shell, we've effectively just killed the session and nothing will will work. So we need to actually kill that and then execute it again through however we're doing it through maybe a web shell or something like that. So say for example we needed to edit some config file, maybe we have sudo edit as a sudo permission which we could run, or there's a batch file that we want to upgrade or execute, and we need a fully interactive shell. We can't just add in a line of code onto the end or you know, for whatever reason we are constrained. We generally can't do that, so if we try to go vi test, we can see that it's just not, not working when it comes to trying to navigate with the keys, go back and forth, or try to exit VI. It just kills our entire shell. So once again, we need to kill the shell, reset the terminal, and start again. So what I'm about to show you is something that's built into most versions of Linux from about at least 2016 upwards, and that's SOCAT. So as I mentioned, SOCAT was covered very briefly in the PWK course material, but we're always just so used to using Netcat, especially that the syntax is much simpler and easier. But just watch this. So instead of opening up a Netcat listener, I'm going to open up a SOCAT listener with this line here. Next, I'll execute our reverse SOCAT shell instead of a Netcat shell with this line here. So now I'm going to use this SOCAT one-liner instead of Netcat, and we'll see what happens. So instantly we can see that the colors have come up just like a normal SSH shell. We can clear the terminal, we can access sudo, and we can see that it asks for the password and we have fully interaction there. We can do control C and it won't kill our shell. And of course we can VI. And if you know how to exit VI, we can then do a cat on it, and we can see that we can fully interact with VI across multiple lines, and we can you know, use all the keyboard shortcuts and everything just fine. So maybe you're trying to do privilege escalation, and you have permission to run sudo edit, and you need to upgrade a file to insert your own code, then this would be a perfect way, because you can have that fully interacted session on sudo edit and edit the file without having to have a SSH session. Although one little tip that I would suggest is just updating the amount of rows and columns, just so if you're editing any large file, then it's not going to crop the file to only a very limited space on the screen. But this is entirely optional and up to you. 
So I hope you found this video helpful. This is something that I would have really, really wanted to know when I was doing my OSCP because I've gone through countless articles like Pimp My Shell and things like that, which were helpful, but just didn't give me the level of interaction that I needed. So SoCat will give you the full interaction just like an SSH shell and you don't need to have SSH credentials. So I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. Leave a like if you did and let me know if you'd like to see any more future content just like this. Anyway, I've been Jason for Jason Zek. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.